Welcome to the Sean Geek Podcast. Welcome. Geek dads talking about geek stuff. And I've got uh, my co-host, that guy over there. Who's that guy over there, Todd? It's me. <laughs> you. <laughs> nice. I'm over here. Fast Fred Fingers. I have a frosty beverage. <laughs> and uh, we have a special guest, Jared. Is it, uh, is it make sure I pronounce it right. Is it Chikowski? Chikowski. Oh, Chorowski. Okay. Sorry. They also get, it used to be Jarzuski, but then we got off the boat and it changed. So, you know. <laughs> that was well, after we a few be, beers. We used to be. Ma- yeah. <laughs> nice. What was her last name again? Ah, so apparently- uh, Tchaikovsky. <laughs> no, no, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're buying a lantern to it. <laughs> yeah, we we used to be McGinty's. I think the first guy over was, was a McGinty, not a McGinnity. But the guy oh. couldn't spell, and when they asked for his name, they spelt it wrong. That's my understanding how the story went. Well, well that's kind of like us. Apparently, Chorowski was easier to spell than Trzuski. Like, <laughs> not by much, I would think. But... <laughs> it wasn't like Smith or... No. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to the show, Jarrett. Oh, thank you. Uh I actually wanted to do this for a while, but I'm I'm really nervous asking people to be on the show. I, I don't know That's why. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I'm really nervous being on a show, so it works out. So uh, do you want to tell people <clears throat> what you do and why I would want you to be on the show? Uh, well, I own a comic book store in Winnipeg, Comic Track Four, and I uh, have a sinking suspicion that you like comic books. <laughs> I think you might be right. <laughs> I might have uh, sold you one or two. I, I think so. I, um, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how long I've been going to your shop for. I, I don't even know. Um, was it around the corner the first time, or were I? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was that it was around the corner for sure. When were you there? Uh, well, I was in the new store where my son was born, so. About 16 years, uh, 21 years in total, so about five years around the corner, oh about 16 God. where I am now. Well, I've been together with my wife for 14 years, and I was going to your shop well before I met her, so yeah, maybe, oh my God, maybe since pretty close to the inception. Uh, could be, yeah, it's, uh, it's April of 99, I officially took over, so. So yeah, I might have been right after that, wow, cool. Yeah, so there's nowhere else I go for comics. Usually, what I do, I, I might, I might go browse another store, see what they have, and then <laughs> just go to yours after. <laughs> I'm, I'm loyal that way. You're, you're, uh, you're a good comic shop owner. You know your stuff, Thank you. which is good. I can uh, usually ask you a question, and you're like, "Yeah, oh yeah, 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 I know what that is," or you might have actually read it yourself. Or I don't know. I like my comic shop owner to know his stuff. I guess. Well, I try. It's also Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. True enough. <laughs> so Todd, what's your background in comic books? <laughs> oh, in comic books? My, my background is yeah. uh, Archie comics. Uh, Richie Rich was probably my favorite. Uh, and used to kind of fantasize being Richie Rich with all the big mansions and the tunnels and the toys and the things that he had. So that's more my kind oh, yeah. of type of comic. Uh, Sean was more of the superhero type stuff. I was never really big into that. And I'm not too sure why. It just wasn't my my thing. But, uh, yeah, just mostly uh, the other stuff. Uh, mad magazines and stuff. Stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was my... You had a lot of mad magazines. Yeah, with the with the back, you know, the last page all folded up. <laughs> so you had a stack. Yep. Every last page was all folded up. Those are good. Did you collect Mad Magazine, Jerry? At all? Um, but kind of. I mean, most of them probably had Star Wars covers on them, and <laughs> yeah, those you know, are kind of between that, like and the ones that kind of pick up. Yeah, uh, or ones with like Animal House or Jaws or the Stings, like movies I like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Mad Magazine were great, but. Honestly, I would read anything that was put in front of me. So, yep. There was, uh, I remember my nana and grandpa's, uh, like my mom's parents, 
Um, she had four, uh, three sisters and a brother. So when I went over to visit, like there'd be a stack of comics and I would read like whatever's on top. So I read like a Sergeant Rock, oh. and a pink, like a Pink Panther, and maybe like a Patsy Walker, then an Archie and a Heckle and Jekyll. But, you know, I didn't know, you know, what a boy comic or a girl comic was at the time. It didn't really matter. It was a comic book. So yeah, exactly. I would just read everything and then... My uncle was the youngest, so once I got in his room, there were a couple of heavy metals, which were nice when I was oh. young. But oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but so, you know, it, just read, just read whatever was there. So so this is at your what, your uncle's house that you're saying? Uh, no, my, my grandparents. Oh, your grandparents, grandparents. Yeah, like so where they grew up. Now was that your introduction to uh, comic books? Um, I I, I think so. Um, I mean, I do remember having comic books at my house, like as a young kid, but I think the sort of experience I really remember is at my grandparents' place. And also, I don't know if you guys know them, but the old like Star Tribune comics, they were like kind of yellow collection of comic books that were delivered like a newspaper. So they'd have like Conan, Star Trek, Star Wars, Spider-Man, Animal Crackers, um, which again, I would... Maybe I wouldn't read every strip now, but as a kid, I'd go through one issue and then the next right. and the next. It didn't really matter what it was. You didn't have those back home. Or did do you remember those, Todd? Mm, not offhand, no. We lived in really small town, New Brunswick. Like, there was nothing. Mm. So, okay. um, I, there was one of, like, uh, mom's or dad's uncles or something they used to have the classics illustrated comic books i don't know if you remember those are basically comic book representations of like great expectations or moby dick or you know scarlet letter or whatever like there's comic book versions and there was this house we used to go to and they had just super old copies of these things i mean they were yellow mildewy people smoked in the house you know so the pages had <laughs> the a specific paper was smell. all Yes, so that I, I think that was the first stuff I read, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I think dad bought me comic books right from the get go. Like, I know I was making my own comic books before I was five, but yeah, I've always had them. And I got hurt a lot. So every time I got hurt, <laughs> you know, to keep me from right. crying and stuff like doctor's office, go get a cast or, or, or whatever, or needle or stitches. And then we go to the drugstore and, uh, you know, that's where the only place you could buy comics back then. And then, you know, I yep. would pick up like the, the nickel ones. I think they were nickel at the time. And it was like a digest, you know, like the Archie digest, but they would have like a justice league digest or, and they're just like these small, like, I don't know, kind of yay big. I don't even know if they make those anymore. The same kinds you'd buy in a, um. You know the Archie one, like the Archie's. Well, the, the Archie Digest, like the Archie Digest, still come out. Um, but yeah, like the DC would have been like the Blue Ribbon Digest. Yes, like, yes, that's what it was. Yeah, like sometimes it'd be reprints of old stuff. Sometimes it'd be new. Yep. Comics. Uh, my favorite of those actually was an Archie one, but it was the Madhouse, which was the sort of monster sci-fi. I mean, horror for Archie at the time, but not like the Archie characters. So it was just the same publishing house, but just different characters? Yeah. Um, actually, it started off as Archie's Madhouse with the Archie characters. And then they kind of dropped the Archie characters. And then they focused on, you know, mad scientists. And there was a yeah. Captain Sprocket was like the superhero. Um, and then DC had like funny stuff, like a digest that collected like the funny animal characters, like the three Mouseketeers or Sugar and Spike and... Okay. Frog and Dodo. So again, stuff that I kind of remember as a kid, and honestly, still collect like now. But so, did you did you grow up in Winnipeg, Jared? Or uh, yeah, all my life so far. Okay, so you had you had access to comic books. Like there was places to buy stuff like that, like the Digest and stuff. Um. Well, there there was comic book stores. I think that existed like when I was like really young, but. They were still sort of like on a second floor of a building or like in an old house. Um, or an old house, yeah. That's well, the common well, no, one, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I know like Comic World, I think, used to be in a house and club bookstore on Corden. Um, used to have like used books and comics, but it was mostly like used bookstores that happened to have comic books. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But then as I got older, there was like amazing uh, book fair, Comic World, Red River, like more and more of them showed up. But the ones that I knew when I was younger would basically like an antique shop or a used bookstore that just happened to have like, oh, yeah, here are these two boxes of comic books, yeah. which as a kid is great. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, that's what we had. Yeah. yeah we used to have to take the big drive uh, to Moncton. Um, and we used to go to my aunt and uncle's. And um, in the in the summer times, my dad – so my dad worked – long story, whatever. But kind of like, he liked the stories about back home. But we used to drive – dad worked – uh, for CN back then, and uh, he worked in another town. We worked. We lived in a small town. And he worked in the city, so we would drive to the city every day in the summertime. When we were on, it was we were off school. And you came too, Todd, right? Like we'd go to Matant Carroll's. Oh yeah, because they had the pool, Uncle Paul's. Yeah, that was the yeah. That so was we the would place. <laughs> so that yeah. So we'd all drive like super early in the morning and go to our aunt and uncle's place, and then Dad would drop us off there. They had a pool. But they also had a corner store, which we didn't have corner stores like that back home. But I remember walking there and mom would give me like a buck. And I'd go to the comic, I'd go to that corner store and they'd have all those digests and stuff. But they had the good ones. They had the ones that were a dollar or 50 cents, like the big ones. And I'd go down there and I'd, I'd be like, I was a chubby kid. So I'd be like looking at the chocolate, looking at the chips and kind of, you know, doing the math on my head and what I could b- get away with. But I picked up so much cool stuff from that one store. I don't even know what it was called. You remember what it was called, Todd? Uh, no, but I know what store it was because I was there probably just as much as you were. But, it, yeah, yeah, it was right at the corner. It was like uh, five high, five houses down. Yeah, well, five, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. But, uh, yeah, so we had nothing, Jared. Like, th- this is the place we went to. <laughs> that's it there was no inklings of a comic book shop although one time we did uh, i did drive to halifax i was probably like 10 years old or something and halifax was like two and a half hours away Todd, is that right at least I think. something like that yeah so we would drive down for a weekend the weekend trip i'd go in there with my buddy richard and brian and his dad would drive because we were just still kids and we drive to Halifax because they had a comic book shop and it was the big trip. And his dad was like the best person in the world. Like guys want to buy some comic books and you always, you know, give us a little extra cash and we go to a comic shop. And I remember my eyes would be like, Oh my God, this is like the best, <laughs> like you could buy anything you wanted. And I was like, this is a thing. Maybe one day we'll have one in Moncton, <laughs> you know, where we, the big city we were close to. It was about but, as exciting as yeah. the Christmas wish book. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Sure, so, Sears or consumers. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes they would sell comic books through, uh, I think, Sears or consumers or not consumers, but Sears maybe. Oh, really? They'd buy like a package. You could buy like ten comics in a package. And there's just usually some assortment. I got some that way, but they'd have like in the bottom where the bar or where the barcode would be, there'd be like a weird thing saying "not for resale" or whatever on it, and. Hmm. It was like usually a reprint. It wasn't, I don't know. I was desperate for comic books as a kid. Like there's, just couldn't get what you wanted to get. So if you found like a whole stack of comic books with like the top third of the like cover cut off, it didn't really matter to you or why the top no. cover was cut off. It was just like, hey, comic books. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I bought so many without covers like all the time or, you know, people would, as kids, you'd cut out part of the cover and then they would just sell it back to the used bookstore or whatever. And whenever I saw anything like that, I'd just go nuts and, Was that or the, buy yeah. in French or whatever. Or... Well, because what would happen with those is initially you take out the whole cover yeah. and then they just change it to like the top third or so for the title. And then like the corner drug stores or whatever would return that. And then they would give a credit for an That's why? comic. That's why? Yeah. Now you oh, were supposed man. You were supposed to destroy the comic book after you returned the cover. <laughs> Nobody did. They sold it for like, you know, 10 cents or whatever. But yep. uh, if you see a bunch of them missing like part of the cover, that's usually why. 
Well, that answers my lifelong question. I never, I never understood. I just assumed some kid was cutting the cover out and. <laughs> no, I mean like those Marvel collectible stamps and those kind of things. Sure, but yeah. no, the cover is usually because they got a credit for instead of returning the whole comic, which would cost more. If you returned part of the cover, it was technically proof that you destroyed the comic. Ah, okay. But you, they would still sell it for like you know three, four quarter, whatever it was at the sure. time. I thought it was because they had that advertisement for the x-ray goggles. I thought maybe someone was cutting out that little <laughs> box. <laughs> no, just just the cardboard submarine for me. That's it. <laughs> cardboard, yeah, I remember the cardboard submarine. Yeah. Never ordered it, but the, I remember seeing oh, it in the comics. The sea monkeys. Did, did you order it, Jerry? No. No, oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, I think the closest thing was those little plastic submarines and like the shreddies. You okay. put in the baking soda, and they kind of go down to the water, and then go back up because of oh, the okay. gas. But yeah, yeah. No, I kind of. Uh, I don't know if you could have ordered a lot of that stuff when I was reading them. I think at that point it was like that grit magazine and yeah. maybe army men and that kind of stuff. I yeah. don't think the X-ray and the submarines and the well, the sea monkeys would have been around, but the sea monkeys, yeah. But they used to have in the back, it was at the back of the comic book that had that whole thing. And it's just a whole bunch of like gag. I'm trying to remember now. Like, remember well, yeah, like, like chewing gum that would make people's mouth like black with like yeah. any kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, or or yeah. the garlic chewing gum. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Buzzer, the chew, yeah, the chewing gum that snaps <laughs> when you open it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like oh, yeah, yeah. Those are mostly the Archie and the uh, Richie Rich comics. I think maybe that's where they were on because I remember seeing them on those. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it could be. Yeah, because I remember reading a lot of like hot stuff and spooky from the same oh, company that oh, did yeah. Richie Rich. So yeah, uh, Harvey? No. Yeah, Harvey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So did you read? Um, I know for me, like I ended up because I I'd buy anything I could find. Did you end up reading like a lot of the the superheroes that came from the Archie comic books line? Uh, no. Not like the Shield and like the those other ones, but I mean like the Super Teens Archies I kind of read and reprints, but it was like the Archie characters, yeah, yeah, yeah. as superheroes. Um, I didn't actually read a lot of that Archie superhero stuff until DC had their Impact line, and they kind of rebooted those Archie superhero characters like the Fly, the Shield, the Hangman, okay, or, or maybe not Hangman, Black Hood. And like the Crusaders was kind of like their Avengers, so I did kind of read the characters, but not when they were Archie. And I I didn't read that, uh, so that was like a, a like they just brought them back and kind of revitalized them. Um, well, it's like you know what some companies would do with like say Transformers or GI Joe, uh, DC at the time licensed the characters to use them. Um, didn't last too long but i remember them being pretty good uh the jaguar as the well. jaguar okay yeah so yeah, this would the, have been like really early 90s i think i think i had a couple of digest books like the archie digest books but it was the ones that just had the superheroes in it and i remember i had i had a couple of those but i mean in my memory like this is like forever ago like my mom i had a comic drawer Todd, you remember that blue that blue dresser? Yep. It was a blue dresser, and I was allowed to keep comics in that top drawer of it. So it was like one full like closed drawer. And once it got full, I had to throw stuff out if I wanted to get more. So I would so I mean, there's so many great comics that I mean I still remember because I used to just open the comic and I would draw beside and you know just I still have drawings of those comics I don't have anymore, but yeah, I had a limited collection. I had a space and that's it. Like, yeah. did, what about you? Like, were you collecting back then, Jared? Or were you just like, um, like how, how serious was, was your collecting? I guess. Well, when I was younger, it wasn't too serious. Again, it was just kind of like piles of stuff. Um, and this, Dates me a little bit, but it doesn't date me enough. When I say I remember buying comic books when they were 75 cents. Yep. Which is when I think I started spending my own money on comic books. Okay. But people who come into my store still say, well, I remember like when they were 12 cents. 
Yeah. So it's going to be a while before 75 cents actually sounds like not a lot of money for a comic book. <laughs> um, but I would say, yeah, maybe on a 13, 14 and I could, you know, get on the bus by myself. Um, I did start, uh, collecting like sort of monthly titles and then trying to find like back issues of things I liked. Um, Like going to Red River Book Fair. So when when was when was Red River Book Fair open? Like were they had they been around that long? Yeah, well this is when Book Fair was on like Donald and Portage. Okay. I think it's the Alto now, but it used to be like the in A and B sound. Oh uh, and then Red River I I keep wanting to call it Rainbow Books because I think that's what the sticker said, but it was on okay. Carlton. It was kinda okay. close to my yeah. shop. Yeah. Um, that's also when back issues weren't that expensive either. So it was easier to buy like an old burn X-Men, you know, $2 for a comic book. It's like, well, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So true. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of, I guess I started with the, uh, X-Men a little bit, but my first sort of title or team that I collected, uh, would have been the invaders. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. Nice. Second would have been Captain Carrot, but um, <laughs> yeah, the Invaders. I would got all the Invaders, and once I did that, I kind of we got their first appearance in the Avengers and the Marvel two and ones with the thing and all oh, sorts of like. God. Yeah. Now, when I say the Invaders, I don't mean like the uh, All Winter Squads from the Golden Age. I, yeah, yeah. But it's for whatever reason, I just kind of like the team and. Actually, well, yeah, that's my my favorite character of all time is is Union Jack, hands yeah. down. Um, and that was from the Invaders. I had some Invaders comics as a kid, and I don't remember how I got them exactly, but I had, I think I had like maybe ten issues or somewhere just under ten issues. And the costume of Union Jack, like I drew it a million times. So that was like me too. But, yeah, you too. Yeah, like yeah. it's awesome. Like when we Todd, when we played our first show was Dome. Right. What was the shirt I was wearing? You remember? It was a Union Jack shirt. Yeah. I had the big Union Jack flag, and that's why I was wearing it. And Sylvie says, <laughs> "You kind of look dumb in that shirt," <laughs> and I didn't care, man. We used to go. No, to, I was on. I was gonna say <laughs> we we used to go to Moncton. Uh, Every once in a while. So what would happen is we'd gather all the comics that we weren't you know, looking at, and we'd go to the comic book store or wherever that was in Moncton. I think it was a used, it was called a used bookstore or something rather. So we'd bring a whole stack, and they'd give you, you know, I don't know how much it was per comic, and then you go and you just pick pick other ones to 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 look at. So uh, that may have been when you may have gotten some oddball ones, and I know we'd inherited yeah, I think a couple. That makes sense. <clears throat> from people in the family, but I, I can't remember now. I think they were like an old, like an old style. You, you guys were probably talking about it and I didn't know what they were, but it was like an old. Oh, thing. that's, yeah. The, there's some Western that's what ones we talked about at the beginning. where they shoot the yeah. guns and they get the, the, the weird flame that came right out of the nose, the, the, the right oh, out of the gun. Oh, uh, Kid Colt. Yeah, that could have been. I remember. Kid Colt and the Rawhide Kid. <laughs> the Rawhide. Yeah, Rawhide. Yeah, and Rawhide. Yeah, Rawhide. Kid. Yeah. What's that? Which one? Yeah, and Two Gun Kid. Two Gun Kid, yeah, Two Gun Kid. And oh, Ghost man. Rider. Yeah. They had to change the name to Knight Rider because people would yeah. be confused between a horse and a motorcycle. Yep. Not sure how you get confused that way, but Oh man, I love I love those old westerns. And and back in the I don't know, was it the eighties or the nineties, the West Coast Avengers brought back uh, um, some of that some they went back in the past or something and I'm trying to remember yeah, I had that, a bunch of those. I think that was a Ringo kid. But like the like blue costume with the kind of like the yeah. leopard print vest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Hawkeye yeah. became his friend. And yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he traveled back in time. Yep. From the West Coast Avengers run. Yep. I gotta, I'm going to have to, I may have to buy some West Coast Avengers uh, trades off you. I, I have a whole ton of them, but I don't have them all. And to be honest, having a trade of the whole thing, you just, I don't pull out my comics anymore. I just like, if I really liked a run and I ran it, read it like a dozen times just go buy the trade right like but i have a bunch of those west coast avengers but yeah i should bug you for some of those 
or I should check. I should check with the boss before I go ahead and make that decision. <laughs> Maybe. But then, oh, the West Coast Avengers are so cool. Yeah, I, lo- I love them. Like I remember buying because it started off as a four issue miniseries. Yes. Yep. And it had like the shroud in it for a couple of issues. And- oh, the shroud. Yeah. Like a one of the Iron Man and the thing for like an issue or two before they kind of kind of got going. Yep. Now that's an interesting character, the Shroud. This uh, this is the same character who who uh, who started the Midnight uh, Midnight Nation or no, not Midnight Nation, was it? Oh, you mean with like uh, like Guy Zombie and the Grim yeah. Brothers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Graveyard Shift. Graveyard Shift. That's right. Yeah, yeah, same. They had an appearance in Captain America. Yes. Back in the 80s, I guess it was. That, I think that was my introduction to the character, and then I stumbled upon him in the West Coast Avengers. I don't know if that was before or after, but I think I read West Coast Avengers after. And I remember running a Marvel Superheroes role-playing game with the West Coast Avengers, and I always wanted to play the Shroud. His powers are freaking cool. Right. But, oh, man. Good memories, man. <laughs> like I'm, like yeah. I want to go pull out my collection. I have it buried under <laughs> under the stairs. It's a hassle well, to go in there, but it's like going to a concert so and then getting home and then want to take your guitar out and start playing. You get all uh, mm-hmm. get all excited, yeah. So what? So what made yeah, you I decide? Have... Sorry, I, I was going to say. So, so what made you decide to actually open up a comic book store? How did that all start? Uh, I don't know, an accident, I guess. Um, well, I, I actually took over a comic book store. I didn't start it myself. Okay. Um, but I kind of started working there, and um, we would basically work for comic books, and that's kind of standard for a lot of like stores, like smaller businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of asked one day, like, hey, can I help out? sort the new books and comic book day and they said okay and then they said do you want to come in on Saturday and like sort stuff in the basement I said sure <laughs> and then I kind of worked on a Saturday and you know it's, it's kind of like starting as like the equipment manager or like a bag boy or something on a sports team and you like you're not a manager yeah so mm-hmm. like I did work my way up and um, the regulars got to know me and I got to work a little bit more and have more responsibilities and I'd work on Saturdays and like for money too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the owner just kind of was going to close and because he needed more time to do other stuff and had an opportunity to get into the business. And nice. Yeah, it's kind of worked out. Right. So, so was it comics factory one at some point <laughs> where did the comics factory four come from? Well, well there was a comic factory in Transcona. Uh, it was Jeff. Comic Factory Two was on Donald, which is Ferd. Oh. And when I when I took it over, it was co- I decided Comic Factory Four sounded better than Three. <laughs> so I just so nice. there's there is no actual Three. <laughs> I just I thought maybe Fantastic Four, Comic Factory sure. Four. Sure. I mean, there's no real reason you have to give when you name a store. Yeah. But yeah, so there's no Three. Nice. Um, but yeah, and the well, Comic Factory and Comic Factory Two both existed at the same time. Um, but I'm I'm the only Comic Factory right now, so that's how I answer yeah. the phone. Just Comic Factory? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. You say number four. <laughs> you know, you, you just you just described like if I was writing like a book, like the the ultimate book for me would be of this this guy who works at a comic store sorting the comics in the basement and eventually takes over the store. That is like my fairy tale dream right there. That that's literally what happened. So wow. Yeah. Should write a book, Jared. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna be honest with you. When I when I moved to Winnipeg and there was more than one comic shop, I literally screamed at the top of my lungs going this is heaven winnipeg is heaven i was so excited and i i remember i i i had to pick a shop to go to and uh i lived in st vitale at the time and i think the shop was called comic cave or comics cave well there were 
Saint, there was Saint three... Mary's in Furmore, that one. Oh, uh, from across the school. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that was to, the comic cave. Comic cave, yeah. Because I went to Glenlawn, okay. and I'm like, this is. You know, I was, I don't know, 17, 16, 17 when I moved here, Actually, and that's literally... where I go. Literally speaking about a comic book store that was in a house. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's why when you said in the house, that's why I kind of chuckled. Yeah. Um, did you know those guys at all? or I, uh, I, don't... I knew Mitch a little bit. I know one of the workers there better. He's, he's a regular now. And a musician, Doug. too, actually. Doug. Doug. Yeah, Doug. Yeah, yeah. That's Doug was the guy I, used to, I see all the time. And um, I o- the only reason I followed his band, because he used to sell me comics all the time. So yeah, I was I, going... I, yeah, that was the one he worked at. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doug's. So he still sees. He still sees you. Uh, yeah, every week or two weeks, depending on the schedule. Nice. Yeah. Oh man, I gotta get in touch with that guy. I like that guy. I always like that guy. He's a, he's, guy. A, he's a damn good musician too. Like, I, I've seen him play like a, a bunch of times. Um, yeah. I I own everything he's put out. You know, I own a T-shirt. I don't have a T-shirt. I should bug him about getting a t-shirt. Uh, I do have one CD. I, I did see him at the West End once, so yeah, he, uh, yeah. They were they were doing his la- like a CD release. Okay, yeah. And then they did a re they did a reunion not too long ago too. I think it was at the West End. It was a bunch of '90s bands playing. Is the Bonaduces were there, or was it maybe the Paperbacks? I can't remember. It was one of his two bands, and they were playing with. Um, projector or something or I, I i can't quite remember i had kids so i didn't go fair enough <laughs> not like with the one where like acoustically inclined was that or yeah that might be the one maybe okay it was a bunch of like 90s bands like that and they're all playing together like kind of reuniting for a one one time only show at the west end or something like that but i remember saying oh my god doug's playing like he's playing again like i don't know I'm yeah kind of excited yeah, he yeah. still he still plays every now and again. Uh, obviously, it's harder to play now anywhere, but oh, yeah. he still does do some stuff every now and again. So, oh man, that's good. I um, think I just dated the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, so that was my first that was my first sh- sh- comic shop ever. Yes, and I, I I I spent all my money there. Like I honestly like I, and then um, I went to. I think I went to the one on Portage Book Fair. That would mean like running right across Eaton's. Yes, yeah, yeah. I yeah, went there. Book, book Fair. Yeah, I was going there because they had some pr- pretty good back issue bins there, and I filled up a lot yeah. of holes from there. And then I went to Comics America, and uh, I the don't want to be negative. Uh, yep. Yeah. The Corden one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to be negative. I don't want to be negative, but I stopped going there for several reasons. And then uh, I went to this place on Pembina that was open for five minutes. <laughs> and then I oh, found... Oh, uh, like in the front of a, like a photocopying Next. place? Yep. Yeah, I live like two blocks away from there. Are you serious? Yeah. My best friend lives like two streets away. I'm there all the time. My daughter has music lessons on that same, on the street, like right by there. Cool. Uh Wow, small world. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, well, Tony um, used to have a shop on Pemina close to there, too. Which one? Uh, it was a cover to cover or book Cover to cover. He, yeah, yeah, okay. He had two, yeah. Well, he had two names, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I know it's the... uh, like about maybe five blocks north of McGilvery. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. But then I don't know how I stumbled across your place, but I think I drove by. I was walking downtown. I'm like, what's this? What's this? And I went in. I remember talking to you and then you're like, I'm like, you knew I, I, it probably centered around Union Jack or Captain Britain. I can't remember one of the two. You knew who he was. You knew the character. You actually, you're like, oh, Alan Davis or Alan Moore or whatever it was. Like you knew. Oh, Cap, well, Captain Britain. Captain Britain. Yeah. yeah. Captain Britain. Yeah. Um, and you, every single thing I asked, you answered and you knew and you probably had read it. And I'm like, Okay, I know where I'm going now, because I, I had some, I had a hard time replacing comic comics cave, because mm-hmm. I mean Doug was great, the owner was was I mean I I got along really well with the owner, so it was like yeah Mitch, Mitch was good, yeah so I'm, I had to find a new place and then found your place and then I haven't gone anywhere since. 
like there's there's no need <laughs> like honestly oh. So, oh, thank you yeah so wow okay so that was the story of me and jared meeting <laughs> in the long the long version of it okay, i have a question uh, sure i noticed uh when i when i looked at your at the site on uh, facebook because when i went to look up your name on google it doesn't show that you have an actual website um, do you have a website and it's just not listed or you just never, never went that route yet? I've never gone that route. I don't have one. Right. Were you ever planning on it or it's just not really a necessity for, for that, uh, that field or, um, things are changing constantly. I, I'm assuming that, you know, it's never the same. Something comes out every month. So it's not like you can make a, a website have it there and just kind of let it sit you'd almost you'd continually have to be updating it all the time i guess well i would and you know like maybe six months ago i would have said that i don't necessarily need one and i do know some stores who have really good ones um and maybe to my detriment even though that i own my own store i've always been terrible at self-promotion but being in winnipeg i have found at least for me like a sort of word of mouth yeah. or maybe even Facebook reviews, which I guess is kind of the new word of mouth. Um, it, it, it works. Um, Winnipeg, Winnipeg is like a small, big city at the same time. And I don't know if I would ever sort of expand outside of Winnipeg, even like for mail order. Um, so like a web province, is always like a really good thing, but well, when you, when you, I mean, when you took over the store, I'm sure, I'm sure that you already had a certain clientele that, that you had as, as customers. And then when you took over, yes. I'm sure you've, you've gained more. So I, I guess, yeah, like you said, like being word of mouth in Winnipeg, if you're not doing any sales, say online for, per se, then I guess there's not really any use for it because they already know who you are, where you're at uh, and what you sell. Um, but yeah, I think that's true. And there's to a point where there are people who are going to go to different comic book stores within the city based upon either where they live or where they work. Mm -hmm. And that is fine. Um, as an example, like right now, I don't have a lot of people working downtown, but a lot of my regulars is all coming in to support me. Um, and I think we've all sort of in a way carved out our own little niche. Like I don't want to take a customer from another store. I still kind of want the hobby and all the stores to thrive and survive and get better in the community and the collecting and, and like, you know, buying your weekly comic books and I, it's like a family, which I think is, well, kind of, you have your own little family. I mean, group. you know, I, yeah. And I don't think any shop, like dislikes another shop and I would like to think no shop is trying to take people away from other shops, at least on purpose. I mean, people do move their jobs change and, right. but I, I'm going to, you know, lose customers. I'm going to gain customers. And, but I think for the most part, that's almost sort of a natural cycle. And maybe that's just me being lazy or naive, okay. uh, Actually, which could, could could very well be. But again, I don't want – like if you live you know, in the north, you're going to go to Galaxy. If you you know, work downtown, you're going to go to me or book for Red River. And I think that you know, makes a lot of sense. And I just – I don't know. I just – again, I've always been terrible at self-promotion. And I don't want to ever say that, you know, I'm better than anyone else because I'm not necessarily like we all do different things better and worse. And we all have like specialties and like a certain style of comic book or like I don't do, you know, like role playing games or collectible card games. But, you know, and, but I also have a very small store. Um, so I, I, you know. If you did do role playing not... games, I would be going to your place exclusively. There's, I wouldn't even <laughs> second guess it. But I, but I think I like I, okay. I like what you're saying because here's here's why I go to your shop. Okay, so 
I, I, I've been to a lot of shops. Like I was shopping for a shop before I found your place. Right. And for me, going to a comic shop is an experience. It's not shopping online on Amazon or on Indigo. It, it's not, that's not what it is. Going to your shop is an experience. And it's a different experience at Galaxy or it's a different experience at Book Fair or, you know, the old comics in America. Completely different experiences. If I wanted to just buy the top book that's selling, that everyone is buying, I would have gone to a place like Comics America during the day. It's You go, he's got tons of stock, tons of everything. Um, I'd go in, I wasn't particularly fond of uh, the owner. Uh, we had a few squabbles, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there to say, like, like I do at your store, Jared, what's Alan Davis working on now? What do you think of this? Like, I, you, you can't do that at every store. I know the stuff, some of the stuff you like, and I know I trust your opinion when I was, you know, when I had lots of extra disposable income, I'd say, I want to add three or four titles. Tell me what to get. I, I can't do that at other places. I can't because I would be getting generic, boring stuff like the, the, um, the boy band comic books of comic books instead of the good stuff. You know what I mean? I'd be getting Backstreet Boys and NSYNC instead of <laughs> Batman and the X-Men, if that makes sense. Like so, I mean, it's an experience to go to your store. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I don't want a big box store. So if you had store, a website, yeah. if you had a website and you're servicing all these international customers, you're sending out all these mailing packages to all these people. Suddenly, it's not Comics Factory 4 anymore or Comic Factory 4 anymore. It's now suddenly Comics America. And I, I don't want to go to Comics America. Does that make sense? But, yeah, it does. I mean, it's not that I don't do mail order at all. I don't do it a lot. But, again, it's just... I think it's a different breed like, of people. Would I like a big... Well, yeah, I mean, like, would I like my store to be bigger? Yes, but it just means I can stock more stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean that, like, I want Comic Factory to be bigger than it, what it is. Like, if I doubled my space, I could add in more back issues and some more toys and more trade backs. And, but I would like to think I'm still me. And, you know, not to sound a little conceited, but I would like to think that at least some of the people come out of my store because of me. So I realize I, yeah. I realize a lot of it is also where I am and again where people work and you know, when you could go to school downtown and that kind of stuff. But um and that's also sort of a reason why there's certain things I don't necessarily stock a lot of. Cause I would like to be able to speak about the stuff I have in my store. Like I do have a very small manga section. I am not a huge manga reader. Um, I do read some of it myself and I like some of it very much. And I will obviously bring it in. If people say, Hey, can you bring in food baskets or bleach or attack on Titan or whatever it is? But I'm, I guess more comfortable having stuff in my store of something I can talk about. Like yeah. there's a there's a company called Avatar, and they do like Cross would be their big title. And I've read a couple of trade backs of Cross, and Cross is essentially sort of a virus, not zombie exactly, but it turns people like very brutal and killing and rapey and, and stuff. Now it's not my type of comic book. But I've read it, and I will say that they do it very, very well. I'm probably not going to read more of it myself, but at least <laughs> I've read it, and yeah. I know what it's what it's like. So, but if people you know, want to order it in, then I'll obviously order it for them, but I might not have a lot of it on my shelf. Awesome. Which also, the role-playing games is I don't get to play as much as I like, and again, small store, a lot of space, but yeah. if... if if I was actually going to have a table for people to play, they'd have to be in my basement, essentially. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, 
I, I think there's a, there's a mentality too. Like, like here's kind of a translation to, to, to mainstream people is that in the old days when you went to a bookstore and like, cause I used to work in a bookstore and that was like, you know, after being working in a comic shop, that was my dream job. And the way it worked back then is you had a section, you had sections of the stores that of the, of the store that was yours. So, you know, some, you know, one person looked after romance and maybe young adult and kid, the kid sections. Another person would have science fiction, horror and fantasy. Another person would have, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So as a bookstore employee, I mean, I don't know if it was understood, but my, the sections I had, I read multiple books in that section. So I could talk to the customers that were looking for books in that section. And right. you had your sections assigned based on what you read. And you do the same thing. Like, it's the same. Like, I come into your shop because, like, okay, I know I can talk to Jared about this. I know he's going to either have read it, know about it, or be able to reference it. Um, but if you go to a box store, which, you you know, I, I want to know all <laughs> about Captain my Britain. Manager. <laughs> uh, I think it's a comic book. That's what you're going to get. So I think that's the difference. Like, there's a... There's a quality in your shop that you can't get at other places that are just trying to sell quantity, but you're trying to hook a reader like, oh, if you read that, you're going to like this. You're going to try that. So you're actually, your audience, your audience or your customers become incredibly loyal based on that. So yeah, we're, go we're going there to see you. Your shop is not no. convenient to me in any way, <laughs> shape or form at all. If you're closer to home, that'd be great, but I'm still not going to go anywhere else because it's just not, I, I, I want, I can trust you to make a recommendation, I guess. Oh, well, thank that you. Sense. No, no, it does. And again, like the stuff that I don't stock, it doesn't mean that, like, I don't think there's merit in it. It's, but I mean, there's only so many, you know, hours in the day and, and what have you. So um, I'm going to read the stuff that, kind of means more to me but i do try to read other things but one of the other things i do like about the shop um is a lot of my regulars who do come in and i mean if you come into a comic book shop willingly not being dragged by your partner <laughs> there is no no matter what the connection is there's a connection sure maybe you like superman or batman or godzilla or uh, Battle Royale manga, or Dragon Ball Z, or whatever it is. There's initially a connection. And on a good day, when I could have a lot of people in the store, especially on the Saturday, like I have, a uh, guy hopes you would have known it again, knows a lot about Godzilla and a lot about cars. Someone else comes in, talks about Godzilla. He talks to them about Godzilla over in the corner, and I don't say a word because, again, I like Godzilla. I'm not going to say I know a lot about it, but eh, th there's a diverse group of people who come into to any comic book store, but there's always some common thread. Now, the common thread might not be there for everybody, or there might be three or a dozen threads, but sometimes I just honestly step back and listen, because if I can listen, I can learn something. Sometimes there's a conversation I can add absolutely nothing to, but there's always going to be somebody there who can, or at least I'm willing to learn. Again, Wikipedia has helped me out very much. That's why I, <laughs> yeah, that's why I give them money whenever they ask them once a year because <laughs> I've honestly used them a lot, a lot in the store. I should give them more money to be honest. I live on uh, I live on Wikipedia. When they say so, you can't, uh... yeah, I mean. No, sorry. I was going to say, they say a house isn't a home. And and from what I gather, like your shop is more of an atmosphere. It's not like the big box store, very oh. sterile, very big, very impersonal. Where yours is when you walk in, you're there, you're knowledgeable. There, It's almost like a safe place. You, you can go there and you can be yourself. Yeah. It's not, it, it, it's like a whole different, I don't even know how to put it in words atmosphere i guess well i used to and i guess it's still kind of true but after a while i kind of thought of myself as like a 
you know, like Sam from Cheers, like a bartender. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm, what a great description. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm exactly. literally, I'm literally behind a, well, I guess he's behind a bar, but I'm behind yeah. a desk. Right. And people come in, you know, for something that I'm selling and sit down. Well, some of them actually do sit down or spend, you know, maybe they're just in there to, where's my Batman book? Thank you. And leave. Some people are in for an hour. Some people look forward to the Saturday when everyone comes in and is kind of being a bartender. It's like listening to people and knowing what conversations to join into. And it's, it's an kind of like that. And, and, um, I found like not even the last couple of months, but the last few years, I guess, uh, realizing that I'm not actually antisocial. I just maybe kind of pick and choose the times where I say stuff. And the last few years in the store, I've just realized how much I've actually come to appreciate the position that I'm in because I'm behind a counter and you're coming into my store for a reason. Like, so again, right off the bat, there's sort of a common connection. And I just, the ability to speak to people and hold a conversation and just even ask what they're looking for or even how they're doing is not something I really expected when I took the store over. Although I will say that when I, the previous owner had that same atmosphere in the store, you know, they would play Scrabble, they would get pizza, people would hang out for a while, they would talk. They would basically sit down at the bar and talk. And that is something that I've come to appreciate so much in the last few years, which is I, I, I should have seen. And who knows, maybe I've been doing it for the last 20 years. Yeah. But it's just really, really started to appreciate recently and uh, very thankful for it. Yeah. Oh, does that sound like econ at all? <laughs> oh, pretty much. I'm sorry. I know you had a bad experience. Is that a good thing or a bad? No, thing? no, no, no. It's a, no. We had a bad experience before, but uh, I've been dragging Todd to Keycon the last few years, and and that's the environment of of Keycon. Like the the good side of Keycon is, it's it's like the the Cheers thing. You just you find a you find a room that's really nerdy and geeky, and you sit in. You just sit around and talk about comic books or movies or you know, science fiction books. It's that, that yeah. same, it's the cheers for nerds, you know, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. If you got the right place. Yeah. And I think, I think the city has a lot of them, but yeah, if you find the right place and not every place might be for you, but, yeah. uh, there's definitely an opportunity there. So, yeah. And like, I sort of even sort of on the same level, like when I took over to the store, it's like 20 years ago, obviously like, I was the kid who read comic books in school. Yeah. Right. And there was not a lot of us and sometimes even got in trouble for doing it. And I took over the store and, you know, the clientele was still mostly older ish. But when parents started bringing their kids into the store, it was a lot of the, Oh, my kid wants to read a comic book. Oh yeah. Which, you know, to be fair, I get it. Uh, this is like before all the Avengers movies and everything. Um, but like even 10 years ago, parents are bringing the kids on the store or grandparents and they're going, my kid is reading comic books. And then they realize, or maybe they read the comic books. I will also say that comic books for young kids got a whole lot better in the last 10, 15 years than they were when I were a kid. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, but it's like, my kid is reading anything if it happens to be a comic book great if it's yeah. a novel great too but so I, i've actually seen the shift and obviously it's still being more accepted and again because of the avengers movies and batman and snyder and, and all that stuff but this was even before that was like as huge as it was like the billion dollars that it is now it's they just, did not make a billion dollars back in the day when you and i were growing up man no not even close <laughs> It's it's such a different landscape now. It's so weird. Yeah, I mean, I, I still miss the Shadow and the Phantom movie. So I don't oh, miss man. them. I have them on my shelf. But yes, I have them too. <laughs> but yeah, so, so it was nice to see that. Like, yeah, reading anything, reading an Archie Digest, reading a yeah. Scooby Doo comic, reading a Spider Man for like 
early teens. It's it, it's it's nice. It's nice that it lasted this long and, and made it this far. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I'm going to start winding it down. So I, I have a few <laughs> questions I wanted to ask. Um, sure. uh, it, I, I don't know if Todd's is okay with this, but I'd love to have you back again to maybe go deep dive into some something even nerdier, if, that, if that's cool. Sure. But I want you to introduce yeah, the course. world to you. Um, did you see the new Scoob movie? Uh, not yet, but I want to because I love Dynamite. Well, and okay. Blue Falcon, but I love Dynamite. So I do want to see it, but I have not seen it yet. Okay, I, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I did see it because I have two young kids, and I did not know that Dynamite was in the movie oh, at okay. all. So when he shows up, I lost my shit. I was so damn excited. I was I loved Blue Falcon growing up and Dynamite <clears throat> and all that stuff. I love that stuff. I had sure. no idea this was happening. And so and Sylvie's looking at me going, are you okay? <laughs> like, you don't understand. It's, it's, pardon my French, but it's fucking Blue Falcon. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I don't know. But I'm, there's a bit of an age difference between me and my wife. So she, she was watching cartoons after all that Hanna-Barbera stuff was not so popular anymore. Right. So she missed out on all that. But I mean, Todd, do you remember like Blue Falcon uh, the Laugh Olympics, uh, yep. Hong Kong Fooey. I've heard of that Like, one. all those cartoons. Like, anyway, the movie is fucking great. <laughs> I but, really liked it, and I'm not going to lie. I cried at one time. <laughs> and my kids oh, are dude. like, what's wrong with you, Daddy? <laughs> it's like it was pure nostalgia served up perfectly. It, it's now, really good. Now I'm worried something happens to Dino Mutt. No, 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 no. I'm not going to say anything about that. But um, it was it was just cool. Like I, I don't know if you saw the um, when they brought the Muppets back way back when with G- Jason Segel and Amy Adams. Oh yeah, um, that movie was great. Yeah, it paid homage to everything we grew up on. It wasn't disparaging. It wasn't box store mentality about the Muppets. It was back to the heart of it. This is on the same on the same wavelength anyway. So you're, you're going to like it. Good. I, I hear there's supposed to be, it's sort of the start of like a Hanna Barbera universe or something. So like there, maybe Kate, Captain Caveman and other things, oh maybe they, they off it, so. really, they really hint at it in the, in uh, the end sequence. They, it's like they've opened up the universe and if that's what they're doing, I'm totally on board. Good. hundred percent. Yeah. Captain um, Caveman. next question. Favorite. <laughs> Remember that one series favorite comic series uh well like i said before i guess the invaders um would be maybe 1a uh, i don't really know why also in the same vein i like Alter squadron and for some reason like the all superheroes, squad and all that stuff well the all-star squadron was like the dc sort of version of the jsa oh, okay. yeah 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 okay of course yeah uh, i don't know why i like superhero teams in world war ii but apparently i do but yeah union jack was cool um i have an original piece uh like a barren blood i have Whoa, what a... what 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 do you mean an original piece of barren blood you uh, have an like original a... piece... well well sorry not an original piece from uh from the comic but uh, like a like a con sketch from Dan Burton, like from the Nocturnals. Are you kidding me? Yep. Uh, watercolor. Oh my god! And then it's the I, I keep just get really getting, excited there. Sorry. <laughs> and then I keep getting them mixed up, but I think it's the giant size invaders. I got okay. Trent Hembeck to do a recreation of the cover. Oh man! Like where they're kind of running across. Yeah, the, I know the, the one. Yeah, yeah of so I got I know Trent Hembeck to do that. Fred um, Hembeck. Yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Captain Carrot. Yeah. Amazing Zoo Crew. Yep. Uh, I guess Power Pack and Alien Legion. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Those are all good. So, Those are all yeah. good. Things as a kid oh. and still love. So. Yep. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, your favorite Marvel movie. And that can be on both sides. It could be Fox. It could be uh, MCU or Sony, I guess. Uh, does Men in Black count? 
Um, I guess Deadpool or Logan, maybe. Okay. Um, about that, my son has seen them yet, as far as I know. But <laughs> as far as you know, uh, favorite character that has yet to come in the Marvel movies. They're not coming, but you want them really bad. And who would you cast as that person? Oh, uh, hmm. well, I don't know about the casting. Uh, I am surprised that Disney has not done anything with Power Pack, even if it's a kind of like a young ages yep. animated show. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, there too. But I don't know if it was part of the Fantastic Four rights or what's going on, but uh, one of my favorite villains is uh, the Super Scroll. Oh, yeah. But it would be such a CGI character. I don't know if it would matter too much who would play him. But I would love to see him on the screen with all like the FF powers and everything. Oh man, yep. Uh, one of the first comics I ever had was the uh, Marvel Team Up Spider Man, Captain Marvel, or not Captain Marvel, Miss Mar Ms. Marvel <laughs> versus the Super Scroll. Awesome. And I finally I, bought it was a two parter. Do you remember the the ones I'm talking about? I just got one of them in yesterday, actually. <laughs> what would it, like, like a back issue? Yeah, I was like, what is she, 68 or something? Like the yellow uh, cover with the three of them on the. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Spider Man top left, Miss Marvel on the bottom, yeah, Super Scroll yeah. on the right. Yeah, I just got I, that in yesterday. I never had the second issue. I might, maybe I bought it off you, I can't remember. Or, but, or maybe I bought it in some secondhand whatever antique shop but i i never knew the conclusion to that storyline where the scrawl is sent what well, i don't know if you remember at all but grabs a, a crystal and then he's shunted off to the other side of the universe yeah. but i never knew what happened at the end because it was a two-parter and it says continue to next issue i'm like no and finding back issues back then was so painful so yeah uh, uh, fifth question, Todd, is yours. What are you going to ask him? Ask him. Question number five. I was trying to do my five. Ah, well, sure. I was I was just listening to your questions. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I wasn't really ready for it. Favorite something or other? Uh, adolescent reactive black belt hamsters. It, it's an answer. Is that what's the question? <laughs> adolescent radioactive have, black belt hamsters. You have radioactive yes. hamsters. <laughs> it was uh after Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles became popular, there were a lot of other kind of knockoffs. Yep. Um that was, in my opinion, one of the better ones. Wow. Adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters. I believe Corey Taves, a friend of ours, drew uh yep. one of the characters from it and his Meet the Geeks. Well not Meet the Geeks, but one of his strips or whatever. I'm trying to remember. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, uh, that was awesome. Guessing it probably would have been Clint. Um, he was kind of the Raphael Wolverine with a visor kind yes, of yes, character. Yes, yes, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so. yeah, I think that was the guy. So are you, Sorry. Oh, man. So are you up and running full <laughs> tilt now? I see you, 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 you uh, opened at the beginning of uh, May, I believe. I've been allowed to have people in the store for uh, three weeks now. Okay. Uh, I was doing curbside before that, which went okay. Uh, and then I was closed, I want to say, for two weeks before that, like right around spring break. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm open full tilt because my normal, like, say, weekly shipments are definitely smaller than they normally are, which I do agree with. Like, I don't know – if everybody is back to work, I don't know if people can come downtown. I don't know if people like a single parent who can leave their kid or bring their kid. Do you want to bring your kid? That's an extra person. So I am, I am open, uh, but I have to be limited to the amount of people in the store. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of still waiting. My guess is about another month and a half, two months until like normal sized shipments start showing up. Wow. That long. Um, well, I think so. Uh, I mean, hopefully sooner, but it's kind of a balance. Like, I don't want a lot of stuff, 
because I want to be able to sell everything. But I kind of want more stuff because the more stuff I have, the more money I make. So <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't, there's no happy medium right now. Yeah. I mean, if I knew that all of my accounts and regulars could come in, then I would much prefer like more stuff. But that may be a bad thing right now. And like again, not just for me, like for other stores too. But but yes, I am open. People can come in. There's hand sanitizer by the front door. I wipe down the debit machine. There's tape on the floor. I'm doing oh, everything. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So I, I, I think I'm doing everything properly, like not just because I have to. Yep. Good to know. Because I'm sure I want a lot of to as will well. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Yep. Is a uh, diamond up and running again or is that what's happening there um diamond has had three shipments of new material out um the first and the third one again were pretty small uh reorders like say replacing a watchman trade back um doesn't seem that that has started yet uh, and they are mostly caught up to the stuff that DC had shipped out through other distributors. Okay. If not 100%. If they're not, they're very close. So is there another distribution channel happening? There was rumor that that was going to be a thing? There were two, um, kind of an East Coast, West Coast. And that DC, and I believe only DC, had shipped comics when Diamond was not shipping comics, like not Marvel, Dark Horse, yeah, IDW. Yeah that's, yeah, that's all I had heard as well, yeah. Like maybe a smaller company like Alterna or SourcePoint who already was doing good business online. Like maybe they were doing it. <laughs> but as far as like say the big, you know, five or six, Diamond was the only one doing it. Um, but Diamond has, again, to my knowledge, shipped everything now that the other distributors have shipped okay. and then DC, dc will start up like uh, normally batman ships every two weeks there's going to be a batman issue next week but so that's the first time in four weeks but that's like a dc decision okay and then marvel said they're going to do like say comics one week trade back collections the other week and then alternate to mid-july okay um so yeah, Diamond is not at a like. I don't think any comic company is up to 100 percent right now, but Diamond's not 100 percent. But they're pretty close for whatever new comics companies are putting out. Okay, so they're not closing the doors like the rumor was stating. But no, and um, the thing about that, if I can sort of quickly do this. I mean, it was probably, I mean, I think it was true that Diamond couldn't pay their suppliers. But the way this business works, whether it should or shouldn't, like, say, Marvel gives comics to Diamond. Diamond, well, not gives, but Marvel gives comics to Diamond. Diamond gives comics to me. I sell comics to you. I get money from you. I give money to Diamond. Diamond gives money to Marvel. Right. There were literally comic books now mostly in the states because it kind of sort of covid happened more there before it happened in canada there were stores that received stuff the day they were told they had to close so oh. now should have should diamond and other companies be more prepared maybe but like if i got a i don't know say four thousand dollar shipment from diamond on a tuesday and then I was told that Tuesday I had to be closed. Well, I can't sell the stuff, so I can't make the money. So I can't pay Diamond, and Diamond can't pay Marvel. So, yes, it is true that they were having problems paying, but it wasn't necessarily 100% their fault. See, that's I mean, the was, that, that perspective is not what I heard, which is interesting because people sensationalize the headline, right? And. I figured I'd ask you because I'd be getting a direct line, and but that makes sense. What you're saying that makes way more sense than how it was presented. Yeah, and now there were certain stores, like you know, until recently, like they had to be shut down completely. There were stores in the states that couldn't even do curbside or mail order, so they were stuck with everything. Now, if I have an account who comes in once a month, and he came in the week before I had to be shut down. 
or sorry, say, I guess say three weeks before I had to be shut down. There's three weeks of this stuff sitting there. Yeah. I was lucky enough that I had about a week to tell people that, Hey, I have to be closed. And this is the last shipment from diamond. And I'm also lucky enough that I could do curbside and people actually showed up. But again, if you can't even do curbside, there was a lot of stores that couldn't make money, so they couldn't pay their bills. I hadn't even thought of that. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I can't put I can't put any crap on diamond. That's for sure. Well, not for that. Not for um, that. <laughs> that <is crazy> I, <laughs> I've, I've I've actually really had very very few problems with diamond. I I'm in a group with some people who like a comics book store association on Facebook or whatever. I'm sure there's tons of them. Um, and a lot of them in the States have had different experiences than I have. But even with a different distribution from DC and if DC say left diamond, um, like we're in Canada shipping sucks. Yeah. And then they were having stuff like their new book day was Tuesday. I'm close Sunday and Monday. I don't want to be at the store on Monday just to receive books. Yeah. I don't want to have to pay two different people to ship stuff to me. That is more expensive. So again, I'm, I can't even speak to the other stores in Winnipeg, let alone Canada or North America. But for me, I'm good. I understand where if you are in the States and your shipping is like a quarter of what it would be here and you can use four or five different uh, distribution sources, like say toys for one and games for one and comics for one. If you can do it, great. It's just not overly realistic for Canada. I'm in shipping. My job is all oh, shipping, <laughs> transportation. So <laughs> preaching to the choir, man. <laughs> That's for sure. No, I, I, but yeah, but I'd rather just have everything come from one place. I mean, it might be cheaper, you know, for the item for three different people. But yeah. once you get in all the shipping, like, or duty, like, I don't pay COD or anything like that either. So I, I, I'm, I'm in a good spot. I think yeah. I'm in a good spot. Sure. Well, in a smaller company, uh, assuming it's okay for me to say like Antarctic Press, like a comic book company, if they only want to have comics on the second Wednesday of every week, well, they only do, I don't know, between six or 10 comics a month. So why not? Like, why not just ship everything at once? I mean, Marvel and DC oh, is course. different because they have like obviously a larger volume, but I'm still getting yeah, yeah. anything from one source. Like, I don't mind waiting if it's that small, but... Oh, well, yeah, for sure. Where can we find you? How do we... Where is your store located? What's your social media stuff? Uh, store is Comic Factory 4. It's 306 Northern Avenue, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, I am on Facebook uh, under Comic Factory 4, and I guess... You may be able to find me otherwise, but important, the four is IV. It's Roman numerals. Yes, Roman numerals. <laughs> uh, email, if you want to, is comic dash or hyphen factory at mts.net. Um, and if you're in Winnipeg, I'm across from the Town Cinema Theater. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'll make sure I put all those uh, show notes, put that in the show notes as well. Sure. Sure there's lots of links and uh, you will know when the episode is released so you can listen to yourself talk which, oh, which well, I'm sure you'll, lo you'll love that you'll oh, I'm love sure it. I will <laughs> but anyway thanks for coming on uh, I had I had a blast I probably could have went for a couple more hours but yeah the boss calls <laughs> gotta save it for part two yeah we'll save it for part two so yes I do want to have you back for sure um, of course think on uh, the next time you're on if there's something specific you want to talk about we can just blow up and chat about that'd be great i was supposed to do research before this <laughs> no no not for this one for oh okay <laughs> sure awesome all right thanks jared thanks for coming yeah, on that you. was great okay right. see you later see you todd later. send me the send me the file once you get it i will all right all right, all right. Bye. see ya bye, bye.